Hello and welcome back once again everyone to another dev update on our upcoming story driven RPG. I hope you all enjoyed October and had a good time yesterday if you celebrated Halloween. It's now been over a year since we went through some pretty big team changes here at Titan Rock and really started drilling down into what we wanted to deliver with Exodus Rising and the Forsaken Realms. Almost one year ago we began trying to communicate with you all on a more personal level through our devlogs and the game has come such an incredibly long way since then. With that being said, I have some huge announcements to share with you all today, so be sure to stick around until the end of the video. This month we spent a lot of time working on a range of different things. We've been redesigning and polishing environments, implementing new visual effects and sound effects, and much much more. As always, it will be hard to cover every small update without this turning into a massive list, but I'll do my best to cover the key changes that we've made. The layout of the lower city that we showed you all a while back is getting a revamp. Many of the key features that we included in the original design will still be present, but we're also introducing a wider range of gameplay elements to the area to make the traversal much more interactive and engaging. We've updated the Baratham Forest quite a lot this month, with many little and large changes, such as the addition of even more foliage to brighten up the environment. I know we've been talking about the forest quite a lot lately, and so I won't bombard you with everything that we tweaked here this month, however I do want to show off the changes that we made to one of the caves here, as I'm really happy with the end result. The Academy of Arin that we showed you all in last month's devlog is starting to see art being added to it. Visually, it continues to be one of my personal favourite locations in the game. Moving on from environments, we've implemented some small changes to how you interact with destructible objects during gameplay. You can now roll through breakable crates and barrels to destroy them, and a lot more of the magic spells can now be used to destroy them as well. The flame spell is unique when it comes to explosive barrels in particular. Rather than directly causing the barrel to explode, it instead ignites the fuse, allowing you to get a little more creative with how you dispatch your enemies. We've also added variation to the scattered debris of the exploding barrels. This is one of the countless changes that we've made which you won't even realise exist, however you would notice if it wasn't there. Sometimes these things can take a lot of time to implement. So much time for something you won't even notice. Game design. Staying on the topic of explosions though, I'd like to give you all a sneak peek at one of the skills we've been working on, Volatile Mixture. From the get-go, we decided that we wanted this skill to be similar to that of a landmine, detonating when an enemy runs over it, but also exploding instantly if you hit your enemy with a direct impact. After multiple iterations of visual effects and sound effects, we finally reached a point where we were happy with how the skill was feeling. I know a lot of you are curious as to how the alchemy system works in this game, and this is something that we're hoping to cover in more depth in the future. As you traverse the world and explore the many unique areas that it has to offer, you'll discover a range of different weapons and armor sets that you can equip to your character. One of these is the Combined Order set, used by the Peacekeepers of Burn. We've taken the time this month to go back to this specific set and polish it. The reason for doing this is because these were the very first weapons and pieces of armour that we ever made for this game, and they were now many years old. The updated combined order uniform and weaponry is looking much cleaner and is now living up to the standards that we're working at. Additionally, a brand new iron armour set has been in the works throughout October. Worn by only the highest ranking bandits, you'll know you're in for a tough fight if you come across someone equipped with this. Let's move on now to the final, and without a doubt the biggest update that we have to show you, the revamp of our character art. When we originally began developing the game, the style that we knew that we wanted to achieve was Fable-inspired stylized realism, a mixture of realistic textures and exaggerated proportions and shapes. We were aware that our first pass of the characters never achieved this, but due to our small team size and limited resources, we were never able to dedicate the time to reworking it. Since then, we've finally been able to set aside time to really focus on this, and we're now finally at the stage where we're ready to show you all the new characters that we've been working on. When we first decided to commit to making this change, we didn't want to stop at just a revamp of the overall characters though. The ability to enter a character creator at the beginning of the game and customise your character's appearance in a multitude of different ways with different sliders is something that we'd always wanted to achieve for this game. We wanted you to be able to create your own unique character. 
to some extent, we managed to achieve this with the old creator. You had various different sliders that allowed you to customize a range of facial features, everything from your eye color to the size of your chin. The issue came with that a lot of the sliders didn't really appear to change much on the character. Because of this, your character would end up looking very similar to everybody else's, as well as NPCs, far from the unique characters that we wanted you all to be able to create. With that in mind, this is something that we're putting at the forefront with our new creator. Not only will you now be able to see a significant difference when tweaking each of the individual options, but it will also feature many more customizable options in general. The freedom we now have with this isn't limited to just players though. We can also use it to create some extremely quirky and stylized looking NPCs for you to discover throughout the world, making every single new encounter completely unique. Again, this is something that we wanted to achieve from the very beginning, but were unable to do due to the limitations of our old character creator. With all that being said, we're really excited to get this new character creator in game and functioning correctly, and even more excited to see what kinds of horrifying human beings you will make. With almost all of the large hurdles now behind us and development progressing very smoothly, we're on track to hit our beta target by Christmas of this year. We're very happy with how the game is shaping up and have finalized the scope and size of the world as well as the volume of narrative that we're capable of achieving with this game. With that in mind, we think now is the perfect opportunity to make this announcement. As you may or may not have been able to tell from the end of that video, we've made the decision to change the name of the game from Forsaken Realms Exodus Rising to Forsaken Realms Varen's Call. This change is something that we as a team have been discussing for a long time now. Originally, in the very beginning, the intention was for Exodus to be the name of the franchise and for Rising to be the name of the game. The idea was that we would introduce you to a small little island of humans, Gron and Cryax, and due to two world-shaping events known as Rising and Onslaught, you would become exiled from the land. Then, in each new game, we would explore a brand new location and island, with you as players and us as developers, as we expanded the world. Fast forward several years and many iterations to February 2021, and we know this is no longer the path that we want to take. We've developed a far greater setting and universe, and the narrative and vision has shifted immensely. Thus, the Forsaken Realms were born. At the time, we were extremely worried about completely changing the name. Brand recognition is hard to build, and even though we're a small indie team, every little bit helps when you're trying to get your game out there, and so we opted to keep the title of the game as Exodus Rising. This has proven to be a big thorn in our side though, as although people refer to the game as Exodus Rising, and even we call it Exodus within the team, it no longer fits. We've tried over and over again to shoehorn Exodus Rising into the narrative in various ways, but ultimately it just feels hollow and empty, contributing almost nothing to the franchise and our vision. For this reason, we've decided to just take the plunge and forgo the name Exodus Rising entirely. Varen's Call is now the first game's title, and we feel it encapsulates the vision we have for the Forsaken Realms universe much better. 
We've also noticed, especially over the past few months, that a lot of you guys weren't fans of the old name either, and we just want you to know that we 100% agree. As I mentioned, this change is something we've been discussing for a long time, and as we're now in a very comfortable position with the game, we think this is the best time to make this announcement. So just to sum up, the game is now called Forsaken Realms Varen's Call, however to avoid confusion moving forward, you'll be seeing a lot of formerly Exodus Rising on our future posts and devlogs. And on that note, that concludes our October devlog. As always, I hope you all enjoyed, and be sure to let us know with a comment what you thought of everything that we covered today. Farin's Call is really starting to come together now, and we're beyond excited to be able to get it into your guys' hands. If you want to see daily updates on this game, then be sure to check out our social media pages or join our Discord server. Alternatively, you can always just wait for the next devlog to come out. We post a new one every month. Thank you all for your continued support and feedback as always, and I will catch you all in the next video. Take care guys!